All right, here we are. We are back with Weather for Weather Geeks on this Monday evening. Hope you had a good weekend, a good Mother's Day weekend. We have had no shortage of interesting things going on over the last several days. Thanks to everyone who sent in pictures Friday evening, the Northern Lights. We got just an avalanche of pictures over email and social media. Thanks to everyone who, uh, who chimed in with what they were seeing. It was quite a show put on by the sun and the atmosphere here on Earth Friday evening. And then we had kind of a surprise severe weather episode on Sunday. Thankfully, no tornadoes in our viewing area, but just to our west and certainly to our south and east, we did have some tornadic activity, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. But wow, what a day we had today. After, you know, a pretty eventful last few days, it was nice to just relax a little bit today and enjoy a beautiful spring day. And it's days like this, uh, that's, it's the reason why this time of the year is my favorite time of the year. And, you know, this list, I, I made this a couple of years ago. This isn't just about the weather. You know, you'll notice uh, some holidays on this list you know it's kind of a combination of things going on at different times of the year like holidays and football season and things like that but also the weather and mother's day to father's day is really my favorite time of the year because we have days like this where you have dry air still we're not into summer and high humidity season um you have the deep blue skies and juxtaposed with that is the greens especially if it's been a wet spring like we've had so far this spring. Everything is very emerald green and lush, and that looking up and seeing those greens against the, the blue skies, and, you know, just a picture-perfect day like today. You have those kinds of days often at this time of the year. Second place for me is kind of early fall, Labor Day to Columbus Day as fall starts settling in. All right, with the tornadic activity across the region on Saturday, that brings our yearly count up to 11 in Pennsylvania and 64 in Ohio. Now, these numbers are kind of preliminary. Uh, they're not necessarily final because some, you know, as the numbers are looked at a little more carefully and scrutinized, you, you find maybe some uh, some uh, repetitive uh, calculations in here uh, for the tornado count. But as it stands right now, preliminarily speaking, 64 in Ohio, 69 in Texas. So we're only trailing Texas for the year so far, tied with, with Iowa, who also has 64 tornadoes. Now, this, you know, kind of severe weather episode on on uh, Saturday was unexpected. I didn't say anything about severe weather in my forecasts here on Weather for Weather Geeks and elsewhere on Friday. It really wasn't until Saturday morning that we kind of had a clue that there might be a couple of feisty storms around in the afternoon. We still weren't thinking tornado threats. Um, the Storm Prediction Center had no risk for severe weather until midday on Saturday. They introduced a low-end marginal risk kind of in this zone in, in far eastern Ohio, the panhandle of West Virginia, western Pennsylvania. But even in that, you know, low-end marginal risk, there was no indication in that product that the tornado risk was heightened. But nonetheless, we did have some tornado warnings on Saturday afternoon. Chris Serenelli did a great job uh, covering things on air. Uh, I was a little bit out of pocket on Saturday uh, doing some Mother's Day things, so I, I was not in front of the computer screen in front of... Uh, uh, the wall here at on uh, at uh, 21 News in downtown Youngstown with this outbreak on Saturday, but we had a couple of tornado warnings and we did have some confirmed tornadoes, not in our viewing area, but we did have one very brief tornado off to our west in Portage County, western parts of the county around Brimfield, 65 mile per hour winds. Of course, this was an EF zero and it was very brief, only on the ground for about 0.31 miles. Did a little minor damage, especially on a golf course out there in western Portage County. We actually had an EF two tornado just south of Pittsburgh, a couple of confirmed tornadoes around the greater Pittsburgh area with that outbreak on Saturday. Again, kind of a surprise. All right, that is behind us. The weather is quiet, and it's going to stay quiet tonight and a decent space station flyby, something worth trying to check out this evening, even though we have a few clouds filtering in. Uh, we should have a clear enough sky to check this out. 919 this evening in the west-southwest sky, disappearing seven minutes later in the northeast sky. I'll put a reminder on social media this evening. The severe weather threat is along the Gulf Coast this evening. This is our weather maker out here across uh, the Missouri Valley, and this is a low-pressure system that is in no hurry. And because it's in no hurry, it's not going to sweep through and give us a washout tomorrow. We'll be far enough away from this low that actually, you know, we're not looking at a lot of rain on our Tuesday. Yes, there can be a passing shower here and there. And keep that in mind if you have outdoor plans on Tuesday. If your job involves working outdoors, you might get wet for 10 or 15 minutes. But a lot of the days, it's not going to be like that. Most of the day will be dry with clouds and some intervals of sunshine. This front off to our north kind of is getting set to wash out, so that's not much of a player. This low-pressure system will finally make a closer approach on Wednesday, bringing us a an increased chance, I think, for some passing showers on Wednesday, even though, again, it's not a rainy day or a washout. 
there could be a soaking thunder shower here and there Wednesday afternoon. Then finally, this low gets the boot out to the east. We're in between systems on Thursday, and that looks like a pretty nice day before showers return Friday afternoon into Friday night. All right, later this week, probably on Thursday here on Weather for Weather Geeks and on 21 News and all my social media outlets, we'll do a summer forecast uh, the months of June, July, and August. Uh, if you're familiar with how we do these seasonal forecasts, we rely some on computer modeling. We rely some on analogs. We look at past years that we think have a similar uh, setup to this season. And the, the years I'm looking at most carefully are years mostly in which uh, El Nino gave way to La Nina. We just came out of El Nino in 2023. It was a big player in our winter. And now as we head into summer, it seems very likely that La Nina is going to return across the Pacific. Other things that we look at as well. That being said, when we stitch together all these years, and here's the list right here, uh, most of these years, not all of them, but most of them are summers in which La Nina was coming on, um, it's a pretty warm picture from the uh, plains on east. Will this uh, June, this is just June, this isn't the whole summer of this map, this is just June, will June look exactly like this? Probably not exactly, um, but it may hold kind of this flavor. It's a pretty warm looking map. So we're going to break down June, July, and August, both in terms of temperatures and precipitation. I've put some hints out there on this video and on social media over the last few weeks. I'm expecting a pretty hot summer, especially compared to the pretty benign summer we had last year. So we'll we'll talk all about that. It's important for your gardens, and if you're a farmer, uh, if you have you know crops you're getting in the ground right now, you'll be uh, uh, well advised to check out that video to see how the next few months will go. Later this week, again, probably on Thursday, I'll let you know later this week. Thanks for watching Monday evening's weather for weather geeks. Have a great night and I'll see you back here on Tuesday.